<laughs> what up, yo? Pavel Jack, back again, 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 again. And this time, it's not really a Q&A, but more of like, most frequently asked uh, questions that I get all the time. I'm gonna answer them for you. Right here. And a lot of them are like, I'm sure y'all put in the caption, with like the most like important ones. The questions I get asked like a hundred times, so stick around and it might just be the one that you asked. So the first question that I always get asked, how did I get into blowing glass? This is, I don't think I've ever answered this one before. Um, I was smoking with my buddy who, like, knew a friend of a friend, pretty much, one of those scenarios. And we used to always, like, he was super in the glass, my friend, and, and he knew someone who blew glass. Like, on a whim, too, he just knew this fucking kid. And he was like, hey, Zach, you should blow glass. And then I was like, you know what? Maybe I should. And then I uh, bought a torch from my buddy Squirrel, the friend of a friend, Squirrel, and ended up meeting him. He's fucking awesome. And then I honestly just started, uh, just started from there. That's how I started blowing glass. I just started to uh, buy equipment. I listened to the next question. How did I afford to blow glass? Like in the beginning, it's super, super expensive. And I used to be, I used to sell weed. Like. I, I always have like shitty jobs and I can never hold them because I'm really like, I don't know. If I don't want to do something, I'm not gonna, I can't even like fake do it. So I always got fired and shit. It's always like, it was like a shitty little like weed dealer. Or whatever, I don't think I can even say that. Whatever, I sold weed. Horrible at that too. But then uh, that like, I honestly bought like, pe like, I bought the torch, which was $100. And then from doing that little business thing, I just saved up money, money. And I bought every piece one by one. So like it's like three it's like three K to start. So I started buying like the torch, tools, like slowly. It took me like six months to a year to get everything. And then once I stopped once, like once I got to like a certain point, there was the kiln. It was pretty funny. There was the kiln scenario. It's like it's like a hot thousand to three K to spend on the kiln. And I was dead dick broke. So I literally was like uh, asked my mom, I was like, Mom, can you please buy and she does not the type of parent who buys me things. So I was really on a whim. I was like, can you please, uh, I'll quit being like a little, like whatever, like trot wannabe drug dealer. If you buy me the kiln, I'll blow glass instead of doing that. So she bought me the fucking kiln. Right there. Yeah, but when she bought me the kiln, I was like, just addicted to it. Like the first time I blew glass, like it melted or whatever, I had like the, I don't know, like a little like weird like chill feeling and whatever. And like I remember I said to myself like blowing glass, I was like, ah, this is what I'm meant to do. So that's how I got into it. That's how I started affording it. And really, it, yeah, I just felt like I was, I don't know, I did it once and I was like, this is it. Like this is what I'm doing forever. But the short answer to that, is how, how did I start, how did I afford blowing glass was shitty jobs and just doing like illegal things. Um, another question I get asked a lot is the average price range on my pieces. So I have a JDR, I'll put like a picture up here JDR then I have a JDC and those are my two like main things clears are for auctions only in shop pieces a shop drop I rarely ever do like a clear custom like really rare but those will range from like 600 to like those will range from like 600 to like a thousand or 2,000 like 2,000 of the highest for clear. And then color pieces range, they start at 1,000 and like 3,000. Depends what you get, depends what colors you want. But that's like the usual price range for shit. I don't make like pipes or pendants really. So it's always, it's always like a rig. And the other question I get all the time because I've been like dick teasing about it. Um, my shop, what am I gonna do the shop video tour? The whole shop diddly? I fucking, sorry, so I got this couch. I wanna get, the, we wanna put a TV here and like a big, uh, like epoxy like wall with like a TV and mount. And I don't wanna show off the uh, studio and shit until like it's complete, cause I'm weird like that. So I'm gonna just, let's hold it off forever, I guess. I don't know, but whenever, whenever that TV's there, it's going down, it's, I promise. Another question I get frequently is, how did I learn to blow glass? I don't know if you didn't know, or just caught off from watching my story, I'm completely self-taught. I'm like 99% self-taught. Like the 1% that I'm, but the 1% that I'm like talking about is like the four times I've been to people's shops really, and like I've kind of caught like a little lesson like looking over their shoulder, which is super helpful. But for the most part, all by myself. And I look at YouTube videos in the beginning, not, not, not much anymore because I kind of, I've watched this video so many times, I didn't know what to do now. YouTube was the shit in the beginning. Revere Glass, Redbeard Glass. I totally, I always forget about him. Redbeard is like a Canadian dude. The shit. Oh, this is a bunch of things. Torch talk, shit like that. But I learned from all those things. And then how I really learned like, how to blow glass was just like hours. Just put in hours. Work every day. At least five. I don't know. But just put in hours. And that, that's another question that people ask me too. I just thought about this. Let me write it down. Is, is there money in blowing glass or whatever? If you're, if you're trying to blow glass just to make money, don't. Because you're going to be miserable. Because this shit's so hard and like, uh, oh, it's just super hard. Like, it's, like, unless you, like, love doing this to death, I guarantee the person's just going to quit or get, like, fed up with it or just get into something else. It's not really a hobby, necessarily, unless you're rich as fuck. Because it's super expensive to do. I don't know. Don't do it trying to make money. Do it because you're like super passionate about art or whatever. Or if it just like calls you, like it called me, like that weird fucking feeling if you do it. 
shoot that route, but no promises. For the next one is why am I not in shop? All right, so in the beginning I used to sell, like uh, I used to make a lot of things and I would like, DM like all these shops that I wanted to be in and they'd never hit me back. So I really have to like, that's why I do so many auctions and stuff like now, cause I kind of started doing those in the beginning to like get kind of notoriety. And I just kept it like, going like an auction every week just because that's just how I do things now. No matter like how much is in between, I always do an auction. But why am I not in shops? Just because I, uh, I don't know. A lot of shops didn't want me in their place in the beginning because I wasn't good enough. And now I'm good. Like, they all DM me after I never wrote them before. So I'm kind of like, uh, kind of like a fuck you attitude. But there is shop. I've been in like three or four shops. And if I am in one, it's because they're literally the best people. And like, I don't know. If, I'm not completely like fuck shops. If I'm in a shop, it's because they're like really good people. Or they've been like a supporter of me for such a long time. Or they help me out with certain scenarios or some shit like that. The reason I'm not in shops, I just like selling glass for myself. Next one is a dream collab. I'd probably say either like Clinton Roman, Snick Barnes, or or uh, like Yusheen, of course. I don't know, Scott Deppie, I don't know. Like all the good people, but I can't even pick one. They're all too great. Probably Snick Barn. I fucking love his style a lot. Up next is what my first setup looked like. I should probably have videos and pictures. I'll post them over here. It was on my mom's back porch, literally on a porch, like screen porch, so you're outside. And I had to build these like little blockers and shit. And it was like a three by five table and I just did work for like four years, I think there. Yeah, that was my first shop though, it was the shit. And another one people ask me a lot is how did I transition into uh, like making stuff, the selling glass? And that's like a good, uh, there's a good story for this one. Just for, for the people who always amount like, think that they have more, have more followers that their shit will sell and that it's not just them as a person. So I used to always make stuff that I thought like was popular at the time or that people would want. So at the time, it was all about banger hangers and like, just banger hangers. I don't know, at the time I thought banger hangers were it. Like I'm like, all right, if I can make a banger hanger, it's still for 250, then I can make four of those. That's enough money, that's a thousand dollars right there. So then, I had that going. All right, my fucking friends came in and lost the track of thought. But uh, I think I was on the, all right, instead of making things for like other people, like I always thought like, all right, if I make this, people will like it, it'll sell. I started making really original like pieces because uh, it was super heartbreaking. Oh, this fucking AC. <coughs> Cause I started making like all these pieces that I thought other people would want and then they didn't sell for shit because I'm such a lower tier artist at the time, no one knew my name and like why would you buy a banger hanger from someone that, I don't know, there's just a thousand out there. So I started making like a really original things. Well, not like a really original, but just like my ideas, not like what someone else is doing. And then when I started doing that, my glass started selling instantly. Like it instantly started selling popping off. I never sold banger hangers or nothing. One time I made five clear banger hangers. I posted them all for sale and no one bought one of them. It was fucking, Heartbreaking. <laughs> so just make original pieces. That's how you, I started like really, really selling things. And will I get a facet table? Yes, I will get one. I, uh, I'm really working on getting my website up, so I'm kind of on hold. And to do the website, I want to have a t-shirt drop, a new dab mat, and a couple pieces. So I think when I'll do that, the first drop, I'll probably use like whatever I make or whatever, and just get a facet table. But I really want to start facet. What kind of kiln do I use? I use a Paragon, uh, I think it's an XL. But do not get these doors that are like hot dog style. You want the guillotine style that lift up. Because uh, because I learned like, I don't know why. Everyone tells you to get this kiln for your first one. I don't know why people tell you, but fuck, do not get that kiln. Get the Paragon, uh, I don't know what it's called, but it has a guillotine style door. It lifts vertically, not like that two hot dog. It's like a big like, square thing, right? It's a big, big square. How did I get my name, P or Pavel Jack? So when I first started, I used to watch like 2016, 2015 era. I was super like, what do I do with my life? What the fuck do I do? So I watched like Joe Rogan uh, constantly. I just felt like I, that was like the best thing. Like there was like good inspirational shit in there. Now it's whack as fuck, but it used to be really good. I don't know, and I used to always uh, meet people. Like I'd always be like, hey, my name's Zach. And they always say Jack, like oh, Jack. And I don't know why, I always kind of like, in my head I was like, it does have a better ring to it than Zach. So, Powerful Jerry, I want my name to be Zach, Powerful Jack. That's why I got my name. And someone asked, why do I use so much clear versus like worked glass? And it's really because I like to, uh, one reason which I don't like to admit is because it's, uh, you don't have to prep. It's, it takes less time to prep. It comes already in a blank. So you don't, that cuts out like four hours of prepping if you're gonna make a piece. So that is one reason. And another reason, which is another big one, is um, I like making new things always. I'll, I'll make something completely different, like on the fly, like freestyle mode. To do that with color, you, you don't want to. You want to really prep out what you're doing with color because it costs a lot of money. You do a lot of time prepping it. So with clear, you have really, a, like you have a lot of, you get a lot of, uh, the word. You get a lot of uh, free will or whatever. Play with a lot, a lot more. And then color is like when you really, really know like, right, I'm doing this. At least in my brand's how I do it. How much to start a studio? I would say probably $2,000, maybe. Maybe 2K. You could probably get away with, it's really just the kiln. The kiln's fucking expensive. You could really, it's probably like 2K you're gonna spend. Uh, 
Another frequent asked question, which I'm sure people want to know. How much glass do I go through a month? I spend probably, I spend probably like $600, $500 a month on glass maybe. The pound's like 100 bucks, so depending on what I use. So probably like 500 bucks a month on glass. What got me into weed? So I used to be insanely, insanely against weed. Like I was racist against weed. I hated weed so much. I, anyone who smoked weed, I was like, they're so stupid. They're so idiot, they're stupid smokers. And then my friend finally got me to smoke weed and I like uh, 18 and I literally got high and I was so much fun. Like we, like I smoked K2 before I smoked this is how much I was against it. I was like, I'll smoke the K2 because it's legal. You idiots are doing that illegal, legal, not dumb stuff. So then I started smoking uh, K2, like a dumbass. And my fucking friend, I won't say any names because he works for NASA, he was like, well, they got, I'm sure he got with his little group of friends, like, all right, let's get Zach to smoke the Kush. So then we smoked a blunt, they brought one over, and I hit, took a hit, and it was a blunt of the Kush. And I was flying high, dude. I was fucking sunk into the chair. And then I remember I was feeling like, I was like, all right, this, this, isn't, this isn't K2, is it? And I, ever since then, I've just been a pothead. Literally every day, I smoked weed since I was like 18. There's one day when I was in Puerto Rico, I had no pot, but hey. Can't, can't win them all. My dream piece to own is a Scott Deppie piece. A Scott Deppie flower piece, to be exact. Beautiful. Um, why the dabber toss? Like every time I'll take a dab, yeah, and then toss it. It's because it's just funny. And then people, I used to do my dabs outside, so I'd always just kind of toss it the fuck out of the way. And people started writing shit, like, ah, uh -huh, toss the dabber. And I was like, oh, it's kind of funny. People think it's funny now. So now I just kind of do it. I was like, hey, remember this? I do this every time, guys. Yeah, That's fun. Uh, an artist asked, when can I start making rigs instead of just making pipes the whole time? That is on you, because people will make bongs and Three years of blowing glass, they'll start making bongs in three months of blowing glass. It's already on you, but practice a lot. It's not like, it's not like the dude who, who started making rigs in four months didn't practice a fuckload until he started doing that. And they're gonna be janky in the beginning, but just practice, practice, practice. My favorite thing to make is, obviously a recycler, but my favorite thing, like favorite like style thing to make is a bubbler, like an old school bub. I'll show like a picture of one that I that I made. I love like just making bubblers. I don't know why. It reminds me like, like how glass first started. Like if you watch like the old videos, like they always made these cool, like insanely work bubblers. And they always look kind of worky, but like awesome shit. So, bubbler's probably my favorite, my favorite thing to make. This is a good one. If I didn't blow glass, what would I be doing right now? I would probably be working on a tugboat, because I literally had nothing else. I could, I could never have a boss, which is a tugboat. You have the worst boss in the world, but I had a connection to a tugboat thing. You make like a certain X amount of dollars. I don't know. Thank God I figured out how to blow glass, because I don't know what the fuck I'd be doing right now. One of my biggest inspirations for a... Uh, like blowing glass or whatever, it's probably, it's Quave. It, it sucks because it's such like a, of course everyone's gonna say this, but Quave and Yusheen are like my top like inspirations. Just because Quave created like this whole like fucking, this whole like cra he's so talented. And then he, on top of that, he created like this whole like, I don't know, he created the bangers and shit. Like he just did so many things for glass and he's so talented and he's also like a quirky little guy. So that's fucking awesome. And then Deppy is fucking alien. So he's my inspiration. He's such an like innovator. So yeah, Death King Quave. And last but not least, how did I find my style? Um, really just doing things that, uh, how did I find my style? Really, I think I just really, uh, I made the, the donut recycler first thing. And it was one of the things that I was like, I don't see anyone else doing this one. Because I noticed that everyone had the certain design, like a certain, like a silhouette. If there's like a silhouette of someone's piece, you're like, that's, that's that artist. Or like, they have a certain like line tubing design, or they use Dicro with this pattern. You know who they are. So I was like, I need to get a certain design. People were like, that's powerful jack. I just started like, uh, like experimenting more with like things that people haven't done a lot, or that I haven't seen. And and just trying to make that my own. And the J the Jack's donor, the donor side really set it off for me. That like got my shit all rolling. And the JDC, obviously. And that's fucking it. Those are all my most frequently asked questions. I'm just looking around. Next video, I'm gonna do how to bend a tube. Like the arms on the tubing for the drains and then the like, recycler top and the Jesus seal. I'm gonna do a video on that because some people, I get asked that a lot. Is how do you do like a clean bend? And it took me fucking five years to figure it out. I'll make a video on that. But that's the end of this video. Thank you and peace.